Hello, in this presentation, we're going to set up and adjust new balances once an account has been set up for the first time within QuickBooks 2018. We will be continuing along with our comprehensive problem. If you've been working along with us, that is great. If you have not, that is okay too. You could take a look at this and see how these beginning balances would need to be adjusted for any company. We are working with the project of Get Great Guitars. If you've been working along and if you have access to the backup file and would like to just upload the backup file at this point in time to make sure that we're not missing anything, even if there was an error, even if we've been working along with us, then you can do so if you have access to that backup file. That would then be, uh, once you have that, you'd go to the file tab as we've seen before and restore uh, the backup file, open or restore. If you don't have that, that's fine. We can work through this and just see how these beginning balances would need to be adjusted. The story where we are at at this point, we set up a new company. Our new company is Get Great Guitars. We sell guitars. We've put in all the beginning balances into our worksheet using QuickBooks beginning balance option in prior videos. If you have questions on how to set up a new company and how to put the uh, beginning balances in there, take a look at the prior videos now. The issue is that QuickBooks does a good job of us not having to use debits and credits, not needing to know too much about accounting in terms of debits and credits in order to set up the accounts. However, there is a bit of a cost to that and there is something we do need to understand when we set up those beginning balances and, and a format to, to use that could um, maximize QuickBooks' ability to uh, set up these accounts without those debits and credits. And that is that we put in all the accounts as of the first day before the new period that we were starting. And now uh, that means that it's going to roll over and everything should be good as of the current period. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the trial balance, which is kind of like a list of accounts, and see those accounts in order. Uh, and, and then take a look at some balances we may want to adjust in order to correct uh, some of the errors or some of the issues that may have happened by QuickBooks being able to quickly input this beginning data. So let's do this. We're going to go to... Um, now, if you don't have the View tab open, note that I like having the View tab open over here so that we can toggle from window to window, the only window open at this time, the Home tab. You can open this up by going to View and Open Windows. And that way uh, we can see what we have open over here as we work through this. We're going to go to reports to see what accounts we have. So I'm going to go to reports here. We're going to go to the accounting and taxes. We're going to go to the trial balance and see what is in the trial balance. Now we entered all of our data, this being a project in the future because we have to work within this time period, remember. We're going to start the company and enter new data as of 2021, January 1st, 2021, we entered then the data as of the last date of the prior period so that as of the current period uh, that we're going to start entering data, uh, we'll have all those beginning balances, we'll have rolled forward correctly. So this is the date that we entered the data in as. I'm going to put uh, 12 31 uh, 20, 12 31 20. We went through and entered all of our beginning balances as of this 1231-20 balance. And uh, therefore, QuickBooks put in all this information and the beginning, this is what we actually put in, the checking account beginning balance, no two accounts, no debit and credit, just the beginning balance in the checking account. We entered all the customers and put in 20,500 from the three customers, I believe, here. And again, we didn't do that with a journal entry. We didn't know, need to know debits and credits. We entered the inventory uh, account here in terms of our uh, products that we sell and that we have on hand as of the time we started this business. Again, we just put the beginning balances. We didn't put a journal entry in. We put the furniture and fixture. We put the vendors, meaning we listed the vendors that we have, in our case only one, and the fact that we owe that vendor $15,000. Again, no journal entry, just that amount. We had a credit card. We just put in the credit card balance. The loan, we just put in that balance. That's what we owe as of this point in time. And then we have this stuff, which if you just put in this balances, we would have no idea what this stuff is. This is the other side. This is the other side to the journal entries that QuickBooks created as we 
picked up all of these accounts. This then is what we really should adjust in order to make our financial statements correct. If you don't, it'll all be kind of in equity and it won't, um, it won't be too bad. Your, your CPA or your accountant at the end of the year when you do taxes could probably pick that up and adjust it and know what is going on. But if we want to clean this up, clearly we should not have this um, uncategorized income and uncategorized expenses. Those are wrong. And this opening balance is not a, an account we typically have. That's, a, that's basically a QuickBooks plug account. That's QuickBooks saying, I don't know where to put this. And we just put it in the opening balance. So that's what's happening here. Now these two we're not too concerned with because note this is as of 12.31 uh, 20 that's the date before we're really going to start we're not going to really start entering data until 21 and once we go to the next day the current year that we're going to be working with these two amounts will then roll over or close out to the equity account and I'm going to show you that in a second so I'm although this is very strange it's not going to bother us because we're not going to use QuickBooks prior to the year 21 although we entered all the data in as of 2020 because we did so in order just to get the balance sheet accounts to be correct not the income statement accounts because we're not worrying about them prior to that date these are income statement accounts they will then be temporary accounts they will then close out so I'll give an idea of what I'm talking about here we're gonna just change the date to the year that we will be working on uh, so this is gonna be 01 0121 and uh, we'll, we'll make this 010121 so January 1st 2021 this is the first day of the year that we actually want to work on and note what we have now it disappeared those two balances disappeared those uncategorized income and uncategorized expenses those temporary accounts those income statement accounts those income and expense accounts gone because uh, they've been closed where did they go how are we still working here why did QuickBooks need those balances well it needed those to be in balance for our accounting system and it closed them out to the owner's equity that's where it's going to roll out the temporary accounts after each year and it did that automatically so that's great we don't need to do anything to that because now we're fine as of the first date of the following year however we still have this uh, opening uh, opening balance equity which we would like to get rid of here because this is not typically used we really just want this owner's equity account now this is a sole proprietor so we're going to assume we only have one owner in this case and we only need to have one equity account then that representing the amount the book value of the company the amount the company owes then back to the owner or in other words representing assets minus liabilities so we really just want that one equity. If we had a partnership, then we'd have two equity accounts and we'd have to worry about, we'd have capital accounts in essence, and we'd set up capital accounts and try to track who the net value, the net worth, the assets minus the liabilities is then owed to in terms of the two partners in accordance with the partnership agreement. If it was a corporation, then we'd have a retained earnings account that would be similar to this owner's equity account where we're going to uh, roll over all the net income balances into so in this case all we want to do is move this amount here now typically the the best way to do this is kind of difficult to, to avoid journal entries in this case so i'm going to go ahead and do a, a journal entry here taking this 79 uh, 896 pulling it out of here and i'm going to put it into this owner uh, owner's equity account so that we no longer have this kind of weird account this account we don't really want to see this account that represents we kind of don't know what we're doing really which is this opening balance equity so we just want to get rid of that we want to put it into the equity so I'm going to do that with a journal entry we'll see what a journal entry uh, looks like here it's the first time we have to actually use a journal entry in order to to set things up to really get it proper and note that this is a credit so we need to make it go down so I'm going to do the opposite I'm going to debit that amount so in order to get to the journal entries, we're going to go to the company tab. We're going to go down to make uh, journal entries down here. Make journal entries. And here is our journal entry form. Quick, quick now automatically assigns numbers to journal entries. I'm going to say that's great. I'm going to say OK. The date of our journal entry is then going to be, I'm going to make it the last day again, just like we did with all the other ones, 12-31-2020. 
I'm going to keep their account number, their journal entry number. Note it made two journal entries prior to this as we've entered our beginning balances. That's fine. We need to debit the opening balance equity to get that going down to zero. I forgot what the number is. But luckily, we have our open balance windows open here, and we can toggle back and forth between the make journal entries and the trial balance. So we'll go back to the trial balance, and I'm seeing 79,896. So I'm going to go back to the make journal entries, and we're going to say 7989. Oh, that's kind of funny. Now I hit the plus button. That's not good. 79896 tab. So let's check that one more time. 79896, trial balance, 79896. Okay, it's going to go into the owner equity. So I'm going to go to the second tab, owner equity. And if you start typing in there, of course, it'll fill in for you. There's going to be the owner equity. There is our debit and credit. Now, don't worry if you're thinking I'm going the wrong way. I don't know what debits and credits are. What if I do this backwards? Then we'll go back in. QuickBooks is very, very, very lenient in terms of adjusting journal entries after you do that unlike other accounting software which would uh, want an audit trail and not let you delete basically anything so we're going to say uh, which is could be good but we won't get into that but in any case you could adjust this afterwards so we're going to say save and close and it's going to say look we're posting to retained earnings which is unusual do you want us to do that and we're going to say yes we do because this is the setup process once that is done then Note that the, only, the owner capital goes down to zero and uh, the owner's equity then is, is increased to the 85,396. Now this looks more like what we would like typically to see. We just have that one equity account that representing the assets minus the liabilities. If something happened, if there was an error or something went wrong in that process, if this balance does not go to zero, then we could just double click on this change the date range to sometime in the past so that we can see the activity there's the activity and then we're looking for this uh, journal entry i believe this is the last one we did bringing it to zero this is a running balance of the activity and so if we double click on that using the zoom the auto zoom feature and we get to this account now this is the ledger uh, for every account kind of has a ledger if you want to see the actual journal entry then uh and you could work it through here you can see the, the uh, decrease here and then it went to owner's equity uh quickbooks tries to do this so that we don't need to know kind of debits and credits but the increase and decrease is almost as confusing as uh, the debits and credits so uh it might be just easier just to double click on the general journal and then you'll see the the journal entry so here it is, and you can then change it again. And uh, if you went the wrong way and you put a credit in the opening balance, then you can change it and go the other way. If you want to see the prior three journal entries, you can go backwards. We can go to the prior journal entry and see what's there. And it's saying no prior. Oh, here's, here's two uh, furniture and fixture. When we entered the beginning balance in furniture and fixture, it entered a journal entry and, and labeled that. One, when we entered the loan balances, was in prior videos, by the way, of course. Uh, it entered this data so there's that I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna close this out and you can see that it's closing back here I'm gonna say I'm gonna stop this from happening by saying don't display this message in the future and say that and then we're back to the trial balance so now all we have open is the home and the trial balance all we have changed is uh, closing out the excess equity accounts as of the first day of the current year, we actually want operations in and put that amount into the only equity account we want as a sole proprietor, that being the owner's equity account. Now we're going to go ahead and export this uh, form, this uh, to Excel, as we've done in the past. It is possible to print this as a PDF or, um, or to print it, <laughs> but we're going to export it to Excel to the same workbook that we have been working with in the past. If you have not been working with a workbook in the past or been following along, you can open a new Excel workbook. The export feature can be very useful. We are tracking the tabs as we go in the file that we're working on within this section. To export to Excel, we're going to go to the Excel tab up top. We're going to create a new worksheet, although it will be going to the same workbook. Clicking on this item. 
Next that will pop up, we have the uh, create new worksheet, but we want it to be to an existing workbook. Then we're going to select the uh, area that we have it going to. It's already going to the right area because we've done this before, but we want to browse. We want to find the Excel sheet that uh, we want it to go to and click on that. And then it's going to open that and we want to export to that Excel sheet then. Once we do that, it should open up that Excel sheet. It should uh, export the data into a new tab within that Excel sheet. It takes a little bit of time, but then it pops up like this. And there we have it. So this is what we've done so far. Notice it put the new sheet kind of like right in the middle. I want to I wanna bring it over to the end, so I'm just going to click on it. Left click and drag it to the end like that. Then we want to rename it. So I'm going to double click on it, and I'm going to call it Trial Balance adjusted ADJ and so it looks just like we had before last time we left off with a trial balance that was unadjusted and now this tab we have a trial balance that we've adjusted now making this basically zero I'm gonna make this a bit bigger I'm gonna hold down control and scroll up or you can go over here and we're gonna make it a little bit larger so we can see it there within Excel like so and uh, that is gonna be that that's our first basically uh, journal entry that we we were forced to use a journal now it is Note that we're trying to do a lot of this stuff without having journal entries, without needing to know debits and credits. And QuickBooks uh, puts together a lot of systems for us to do that, including us being able to enter these beginning balances without needing two accounts or debits and credits. It is also possible with the use of registers, it would have been possible for us to use registers to do what we did in this particular transaction. But in this case, I think the registers are as complex, if not more so, than using just journals uh, the registers there's a register for each account and we saw them briefly and they look kind of like the same thing as the uh, check register uh, the thing confusing about registers is that uh, when you're not talking about the checking account and you're talking about something like the opening uh, balance equity register it gets confusing on which if it, is it going up or down and when you're closing it out to another equity account including being in this case the owner's equity it's just as difficult to know whether it's going up or down as it is to guess whether we're going to debit or credit an account so in any case this would be the last step you'd need to do if you're step if you're working on setting up new accounts this would be the last thing you'd need to do to really clean up that uh, that problem that will happen due to the fact that QuickBooks is trying to help you out by uh, by not making you correct journal entries. If you don't do this, then uh, it will look kind of messy. It won't look as professional, but your accountant could probably figure it out at the end of the year. But it is something that could uh, clean things up and look make things look more professional as we go.